In the final video for project number two, we're going to learn about filters in Photoshop. So quickly, before we get started, let's consolidate the effects that we've added here. So let's click on all of the adjustment layers we have here, add them to a new group, and call that group Adjustment Layers. And I have that dodge and burn layer in there as well. Okay. Now, with the Gibson layer selected, we can go to Filter, and then we have all of these different options for filters. And this is really easy to go through and kind of figure out what they all do. They're very self-explanatory uh, for the most part. Um, but instead of going through this and doing it this way, there is an option to go to Filter Gallery and kind of make adjustments to your filters in a very in a much more user-friendly way. You can tell that I don't have filter gallery available. It's kind of grayed out right there. Um, remember that you have to have a smart object to use filter gallery, but also you have to be using an 8-bit image. And this is a 16-bit image. So what I want to do is go to image mode, 8 bits per channel. You don't need to know what this means if you don't. Um, in order to do this, just know that you have to have an 8-bit image if you want to be able to use the filter gallery. So now that's an option that I can click on. I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll zoom out here and I see all of these different filter options. Now this is adding the filter to the layer as a whole. So that crop that I did to my document didn't affect my layer. So that's why we see the extra on the sides here and the dodge and burn isn't showing up here. But we can go through these different layers and or different filters and see what they do. So for each of these, there will be a filter here. You can see in the icon kind of what it does to this main image of this boat on the water. And then you can make adjustments to the filter over here. So this colored pencil filter, the idea is that it's making my image look like it was drawn with a colored pencil, okay? There's this cool neon one, plastic warp, um, or plastic wrap. All of these can do different things, and in the name, it explains exactly what they do. So go ahead and find a fun filter that works for what you're trying to do with the picture. So these are categorized um, into different categories right here. I'm just gonna play around until I find something that is fun. So I like this texturizer, I think it's fun. Makes it look like the image was printed on some sort of canvas. And then you can adjust the light source here for where that um, canvas would be, you know, where the light would be coming from. You can change the textures up here. Go with sandstone. Now it's pretty subtle, right? I don't want to go crazy with this. I'll make it pretty small and not super visible. Just a really slight adjustment. You might not even be able to see that if you're viewing this online. Okay. Just really smart, small adjustment, and it adds some texture to the image. If you want to do a grain, it can kind of make it look like you took it with a film camera, which is fun. Um, so I'll go ahead and click OK, and now we can see the adjustment layers are back onto that image, but this layer has now that filter applied to it, and I can turn it on and off. I did it really subtly, so again, if you're viewing this online or at a low resolution, you might not even be able to tell what I did. So go ahead and find a fun filter that you can use 
um, as you're working on this project. And now we have completed project number two.